bounce back spot here. Well, they played pretty well last week against Stanford, right? They win that one 35 24. Game gets, depending upon when you got it, Ben, um, you you could have bet over and won because I think it opened 57 and a half and then climbed all the way to 60 by game's mm-hmm. end. So um, 59 sits kind of in the middle of that. Bookmakers never like when games end that way. But yeah. you could have got caught on the wrong side, too, if you uh, bet late and got the 60. But they seem to be pretty good. Uh, Dorian Thompson-Robinson got hurt in that game, but came back and played and is back at practice this week. You know, yesterday we were hearing that he's questionable. Today, no problem. It was a non-throwing shoulder, and he said he gutted it out during the game, and it's not giving him any trouble. Now he's back at practice, so that's good. For the Arizona State side, what's good is – Diamante Trainum is going to be back for them. That running back didn't play last week against Colorado, missed it with a foot injury. So both of these teams in pretty good health uh, heading in. Both of these teams want to run it. We've seen it out of Chip Kelly so far this year, and Mm -hmm. they've been a pretty good front runner. I've got some numbers in the games that they've been ahead and been able to front run. Um, 41 rush attempts, 257 yards against Hawaii. 43 rush attempts, 246 against LSU. 49 last week for 224 against Stanford. All of those pretty pretty solid averages, 4.65763. So if you let UCLA get ahead of you, um, they're going to go to that ground game. And with the two-back system that they have, those are good backs. Uh, Getting Zach Charbonnet from Michigan as number two has really been nice. And the offensive line's been good. So Arizona State wants to do the same. Um, But there's not much edge situationally here because UCLA, like I say, comes in off of the Stanford win. ASU got right last week against Colorado. Um, so they come in off of a big win. And these two teams, both in the Pac-12 South, this could be for, you know, some of somewhat of an elimination game. It's, it's hard to say that in September. But again, you're talking about a division where um, Utah has – obviously spiraled a little bit. Yeah, Um, it's open is what you're saying. It's wide open because USC comes back last week and doesn't perform well against Oregon State. Who knows what USC is going to do. This could be um, for the uh, spot in the Pac-12 championship game. The key separator in this one for me has been the UCLA run defense. It's been good. It's been Mm -hmm. good. This team overall – They're allowing, if I take the sack yardage out once again, which you really have to do in college football because otherwise the run numbers are a little misleading. Yeah, they're skewed. They've only allowed 80 yards, a little less than 80 yards per game on the ground. And it's not like teams aren't trying to run against them, but they've been stout at the point of attack, only 3.3 yards per carry. Arizona State's going to test that. This is a team, a macho-style team with Herm Edwards and his NFL coaching staff that's going to try it. Um both pass rushes are strong here. When it gets to the um, Arizona State defense, I think that this is a huge step up in class just for that particular unit. Mm-hmm. ASU so far has played Southern Utah. Not going to pose much of a threat offensively against them. UNLV without their starting quarterback, not much of a threat. They played BYU, actually outgained BYU in that game. And then, of course, you talked about the problems Colorado's had offensively. So none of those four teams are anywhere near the class of UCLA offensively. So we'll see what the ASU defense has. Are there are their numbers real, or is US, or UCLA going to push them around a little bit? If you look at the total, um, I think you gave me 55.5 as the current. Yeah. A, ASU... All four games have gone under 55 and a half. They're only averaging 48 and a half combined a game. UCLA, three of their four have gone over the 55 and a half. So you get a little difference there, and it comes down to pace. Arizona State, when you do the total plays numbers in their games, might be one of the slowest teams in college mm-hmm. football. So far, um, on average, 123 total plays per game. Very, very low for a um, yeah. college football game, 61 and a half aside. UCLA up at 138, about 15 more. So, uh, you know, you wonder, you try and think as a head coach, will Chip Kelly try and press pace to get Arizona State out of their comfort zone? Arizona State will probably try to be pedestrian, get them out of a comfort zone. 
who can do what. The only you team want... I've seen that scared UCLA was Fresno, and Fresno did it with Jake Hayner throwing the ball all over the lot. <laughs> they, they did. <laughs> do you want to take a guess on what I think Chip's going to do? I think Chip's going to play fast. I agree. I, I, re- I think they're going to try to speed Arizona State up. And it, it's so funny because if if we could even guarantee that they were going to do that, you would think, well, the game's got to go over. But I don't think it's that simple because it could also just cause some rhythm issues with UCLA. Because, again, what they've been doing, controlling the ball when they're up has worked really well for them. But if they're headed into this game thinking that they need to maybe do something different, maybe maybe that's overthinking it. But at the same time, it's Chip Kelly – and I think that offense is equipped to to move at a pretty pretty fast pace throughout. Like, I mean, they've done it already. And this Arizona State team, we saw like against a team like Colorado. You know, of course Colorado has their issues offensively, but if if you get anywhere into a game where you're running the ball, I mean that that front seven is going to be pretty stout for Arizona State. So I think UCLA is going to really try to push the pace in this one more than they have even in some prior games this season, I kind of lean over because I almost feel like this total is just kind of put right in the middle, right? Right around that 55. Arizona State's gone under, like you said. UCLA's been going over. And it's kind of like pick <laughs> pick your poison here. Like what, you know, what side of this is are you going to be on? And I have to lean with the over in this one. Yeah, and I think you can make the case that the reason why Arizona State's games have been so low scoring is because they haven't played anybody who can play offense yet. And what will happen when they do? I think, you know, um, Arizona State, like we say, has been good defensively, and this is a step up in class. I just What keeps coming back to me, Ben, is the way UCLA pushed LSU, an SEC team with five-star recruits all over the place, the way they pushed them around and ran on them. And Mm -hmm. I know Arizona State wants to play that macho, tough front seven style, but UCLA might push them around too. I mean, you pushed LSU around. Is Arizona State that much um, more of a brick wall in their front seven than LSU is? I'm not sure. We're going to find (laughs) out. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to find out. But um, I would think that Chip um, plays pace. And, and, you know, I – cranked out all those numbers of how many times UCLA ran the ball when they were ahead. It's always in the high 40s. But even running the ball that much, you know, immediate reaction to that is, well, that's grinding clock and that's a low-scoring game. But as we said, UCLA is playing overs while running the football, which lets you know that their run game gets chunk plays. It's not just four yards, three. It's 18 yards, 16 yards eight yards, you know what I mean? So you can get over with a running game for sure. We'll see if Arizona State can stand up against it. It's, it'll be a good game. Yeah, the the spread for me, I have to stay away from this one because I just I think it's a tight number three. It's kind of sitting on that number. Do you see any three and a halfs anywhere? I did this afternoon before we came on, but that may have changed. I haven't looked in the last couple yeah, of Yeah, maybe. I mean, it might have changed right before that I got on and I saw that three because, yeah, it's a tough one. I – I could see it going to three and a half. I, I could also see it going to two and a half the other way. It's it's gonna it's gonna be right around the three, I think. But it's hard to say, right? How how the market looks at Arizona State on the road here. I see a few of both DraftKings for I'm just trying to think of places that are available for a lot of the country. Um, still showing three and a half. Most Las Vegas places, circa South Point. Caesars all holding three and a half. I see some online's down to three. So it would look like Ben, since it started at four, that downward is the way it's going. Um, so mm-hmm. for those listening, again, if you're in that situation where you want the hook because you think it's going to be a field goal game, don't wait around. Um, get it now because otherwise, you know, there is an advantage to betting early in the week. A lot of times, um, you get the best of the numbers. So. That's what we're seeing right now. We'll see where it goes from here. Yeah, this is going to be a, a one of the last games of the night. So a good old uh, Pac-12 after dark mm-hmm. matchup. Do you stay up for those? I do. And I live on the East Coast, which is really Man. crazy because um, 2.30 in the morning is generally the time when everything's done. If Hawaii starts at midnight East Coast, it's 3.30 in the morning. So yeah, you uh, can almost 
go to bed at eight and wake up and catch the second half if you woke up early enough. <laughs> but that wouldn't make sense because there's games like this going on throughout the night. So uh, 